Hello, this is Sandra from Cherry Heart with episode 19 of my crochet podcast. Well, crochet slash other yarny crafty things podcast. Um, the beginning bit, I'm not very good at the beginning bit. So social media stuff is, um, you'll find show notes and my blog at www cherryheart.co.uk um, I'm Cherry Heart on Facebook and on Ravelry and I'm Sandra Cherry HRT on Instagram and that's about it really I'm on Pinterest as Cherry Heart as well um, yeah I don't think there's anything else important is there? if not I'll just shove it in at the end or anything or it'll be in show notes it'll be linked on my blog if there's anything else you desperately need to find me on. Um, I've got my little friend with me here today, you can't actually see him. Here he is, he's sitting on my lap, he's being very, being very cling on he was actually fast asleep um, on the sofa in the living room and I've relocated up here so that we could do podcasting and get on with things and I don't think he's taken kindly to the relocation, have you? So it's like, you move me, you must fuss me. So I'm doing a bit of puppy fussing at the moment. Not that you're really a puppy anymore. Um, so today it is quite cold and it's nice and sunny and crisp and lovely, but it is quite cold. So I've got my warm things on today. I've got this shawl that I made years ago which is called it's called winter flowers except for it's not called winter flowers because it's written in a different language so it's called fleurs de in i can't remember inverto or something no it's in spanish winter flowers in spanish is what it is on my by gabriella um which was actually uh, i tested the pattern for her when she brought it out. It was one of the first pattern. It was the first pattern I think I ever tested. It's a really good pattern. She makes beautiful things. And um, yeah, so I like it with my navy stuff, my stripy things. I think it works well. And I've got my little mitts on today as well to warm me up till the heater kicks in. And these are my, they're based on my, I can't remember what I called them cherry basket mitts I think they're based on that I, the originals had this sort of basking pattern to here and then this part is sort of plain crochet with like cross stitch cherries on ever so cute and it's actually proper mittens because they have the thumb holes and everything but for a sort of a quick fix I've made a couple of these now where I just use keep the basket pattern bit and don't put the top on because I do quite like just the wrist warmers because I can pull them up if I want that kind of effect and I can squish them down if I need to get my hands out so I like that stop licking you maniac um, yeah so that's based on those and these little roses are from the pink milk it's like the little roses little rose pattern I got from pink milk the lovely Heather hello Heather if you're watching yeah, they're really cute. So I thought they finished it off rather nicely. So that's why I'm wearing to keep me cosy. And a Bertie. He's keeping me cosy, aren't you? You're a good hot water bottle in winter. I'm finding. So what should we talk about first? What's the thing that I've actually started doing? Yeah, so I haven't got much on the go at the moment because I was doing my big secret squirrel thing and I didn't have time for anything else. But I have finished that now or at least I've finished that part of it now so my little crafting hands are free for other things which is good so I started in my uh, socks is what I started to show you that I've kept them in my Betsy makes bags my cute little dears so I was feeling kind of woodlandy all this autumn all these woodland walks me and Bert have been taking in the autumn made me feel all woodland animals so I thought I'd get my deer back out for this so, 
and this is my socks that I did show you before I think but I'd only got a tiny tiny start on them I haven't got an awful lot further really I'm still on the first one very tangled <clears throat> let's see if I can sort them out so we can actually yeah I don't need you to do that thank you mm -mm. right here we go finally there we are. So when I saw you last, they were about down here. <laughs> Getting yarn on his head. Yeah, so I'd done the cuff and I'd started a little tiny bit of pattern. And so this yarn is by um, Herbsblatt Regina. Regina? Regina. And um, it's called Blueberry Pancakes. And I love it showed you the cake last time look it's like squished up blueberries and pancake mixture and you could almost eat it it's fabulous so i just made some blueberry waffle socks i've done the little um our mini knit along with me and amelia so i thought everyone said blueberry pancake yarn you have to make the um blueberry waffle socks and I did agree, but I thought, oh, I've just made them. I've literally just finished a pair. I don't want to cast on another pair immediately in exactly the same pattern. So I'll just, I'll do something else with these. I'll find something else. So I started a little bit of the pattern. Did it wrong. Ripped my few rows back. Did it again. Got it right, and it's nice, but it just, it doesn't really show up on this yarn. Are you going now? Do you want to get down? Go on then. Let's pop you down. There you go. Um, yeah, you couldn't really see it in this yarn because it's quite sort of busy and it's got sort of dark patches so you couldn't really see the pattern. So I ripped back again all the way to, and I thought, oh, well, I will do. Just a few bit of time had passed by then. Sorry about him. I will do the blueberry waffles after all, actually. It kind of fits and it's nice and easy and... You know, all it needs is a bit of texture on this. It doesn't need sort of a pattern because it'll be a bit lost. So I will do that. So I could have just ripped back my tiny bit of pattern again and started the blueberry waffles. But what I decided to do was rip the whole cuff back as well. And what I did, because what bothered me last time is because it's with the blueberry waffles, it's too. What? Okay, it's back. It's been a pain and he won't settle, so it's going to be one of those days. You've got to sit nicely now if you're going to stay there. Right, so what was we saying? What was I saying even? Yeah, so because it's sort of two stitches plain and then, you know, it's a two by two, the pattern. Where I do my cuffs a bit bigger, if I do two by two ribs, which I like to do, it doesn't match up with the two by two of the pattern where I decrease them. So I changed the ribbon so that I could do my decreases and line them up. So I did two by two by three by two ribbon. And then where I put the decreases in the sections that had three on, it all worked out nicely. So that pleased me. It's the small things, isn't it? So now all the sort of pearl stitches line up and all the knit stitches line up nicely. So that's good. So obviously not finished yet, but coming along nicely now. Doing a little, just a standard flap and gusset heel, because that's my favourite at the moment. And I've got my little... Ooh, turn around. Why do these things never hang straight when you want to show them? There we go. got my little... Halloween style pumpkin on to get into the Halloween mood. Ah, oh, that's why, because I had it hanging like that, didn't I? Because I'm working on it that way. <laughs> it's cute. Which I got from, who did I get that from? I think. I don't know. It might have been Molly from my own son's house. But I don't think it was. I don't know. Um, okay, and the other thing, see this is why you don't need to be on my lap, because I need to get a big thing on my lap now. The other thing is, I'm excited about this, the Happy Scrappy Blanket. It's 
back, back in action. Look at the size of it, look it's a monster. Right, so let's find a bit that I've actually been working on. I've actually got a bit of yarn attached at the moment, which doesn't help. I'm working on a square in this one at the moment, which is... Hmm. I think this was from Sarah's Texture Cards, I believe. I think so. This is quite a big one, and I think I ordered some of the sort of bigger size ones from her. Right, so we're definitely sort of coming to the end now. So this is basically the section I've been working on. I know it's on your head, but you're in the way. So what do you expect? Let's come back a bit. There we are. So that's more or less the bit I've been working on. I have added this strip and the one next to it. And from here up and this one. And I'm just doing... Oops. Oh no, it's moving now. Look, that one's new too. And from there up. So yeah, I've done quite a lot actually, haven't I? That's another it's another four by four squares plus I'm on another strip at the minute, so that'll be four by five squares when I finish this one. So yeah. So that's my um Easy Knits cocktail hour socks. And I've got lots of lovely um minis here from Himiko from my last swap. Look at this one. This is one of my favourites. So I was looking forward to putting this one in. So pretty. What are you doing? Why are you licking the chair? That's just strange. Then just keep doing it. And this one as well. Look at that. Wow. I'm liking these bright ones. Kind of muted rainbow. I really like the colour of that one. Oh look, it looks all patchy in the camera. How strange. I mean, I guess it kind of does in real life too. You don't sort of, I don't know, it doesn't show up quite as well in real life. This one's nice, sort of soft, subtly one. Yeah, so that's coming on really nicely. And uh, I've got quite a few minis now. These are the ones I've got left. This one. I say I'm keeping it in this, but actually it's spilling over the side. Stop licking the chair. Let's see if I can show you what's in there. So this is my little bowl. These are ones that aren't big enough to do a whole square out of. So if I've got sort of a patch I need filling in, or I just want to do a small bit, I use one of those ones. And then these ones should all be big enough to do a proper proper size square or even a bit bigger if I want to. Yeah, so I'm very happy with that. I was looking forward to getting back to working on that. So all I've got to do now is finish another four squares on top of these rows that are left. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I've done five by four in the last couple of nights and I've got seven by four squares to do, so that should only take me two or three evenings maybe, which is quite exciting, and then I can think about the border. So I might do, I might wait till December to do the border, to week it out, but I definitely want it finished this year. So I don't know whether to do one solid colour for the border. I wonder how much I'll need. Do you think just one, like, whole... 100 gram hank would be enough to get all the way around the border. I want something quite simple, I think, because obviously this is quite, there's quite a lot going on here visually already, so it's not like we need a really exciting border, so it can be quite thin and quite plain. I was thinking maybe even of just doing like a crab stitch or a row of um, US singles, UK doubles, and then like a row of backwards ones a round of backward ones just to finish it off maybe. thought that might be quite nice, sort of simple, but 
you know, just a little touch. Because I'm thinking of um, Danny's Cozy Memories balloon kit when she did hers. And um, she finished hers with a little eye cord border, which looked really cute. So, I don't know, is crab stitch like the crochet equivalent of that? Maybe. But I thought, thought that's what I might do. Um, yeah. I feel like I'm waffling off into nothingness. Um, yeah, so the other thing I wanted to say about this is, well, two things actually. First of all, so this is my Happy Scrappy Squares blanket, which is kind of like a crochet version of the um, Cozy Memories blanket in a way, because I, I'm too lazy to knit one. I'm quicker at crochet, so if I quit crochet one that seemed more manageable to me. So um, I've got the pattern for this on my blog which I'll link and I also did a video tutorials because this is all joined as you go. So obviously you can work on top of the square below and then I'll show you how to join it on to the previous one. So you join that one on and then you'd add this one and join it on there and work your way along like that. So I didn't, um, I've done a video tutorial for that a while ago so I shall link to that so you can see in case you want to make your own. But the other thing was is um, the sort of the minis themselves because obviously if you're starting out and you quite like the idea of this the idea supposedly is that it's leftover sock yarn so you knit all your socks and then you gather all the bits you've got left over and you think well I may as well make a blanket out of all of these that I've got left over as you can see, if you want them all to be quite sort of different and random, you're going to need an awful, awful lot of them. I don't know. Sorry, my yarn just dropped on the floor. I don't know how many, how long mine is in actual fact. But there's going to be quite a few squares in here. And I haven't actually, I don't think I've repeated at all. I think they are all completely unique skeins. Three, I'm just quickly counting. Five, six, oh. It's not so easy because I don't always do them as squares, do I? Seven, eight, nine. I think it's 12 by 16. Wow, that's a lot of squares, isn't it? Yeah, that's a lot of squares. So that's a lot of minis anyway, is the point. So although, you know, I've collected up some sock yarn leftovers, I certainly haven't collected up over a hundred odd. Because I haven't knit over a hundred odd socks and that would take a quite a considerable time for the best of us, I think, to collect up that many. So of course we like to do swaps, but it can be very hard when you are starting. There was a lady that contacted me and she sort of said, oh, have you got any minis? you can swap. I haven't got any myself, but we could swap for something else. And at the time, unfortunately, I just didn't have any spare. I'd sort of used up all the ones, you know, that I had at the time, and um, I'd swapped out what I had spare already. So I didn't have any. So anyway, the, the answer to that, which is what I'm trying to say in my roundabout rubbishy way, the answer to that problem is a swapless swap. So I've been talking to um, the lovely Lisa, who is Life of Laugh on Ravelry. And um, she was she told me a little while ago, and I mentioned it earlier this year, actually, that she does a group of swapless swaps. So what that means is you, uh, you sign up to the group, but of course you haven't got any of your own minis to swap. So you pay to sign up to the group and then you get sent a whole batch of little minis. So it's like a little starter kit. And then of course you can put those in your blanket and with any luck you'll have some left and then you can swap those on and get some more in and that sort of starts the ball rolling. So um, yeah, I thought that was a really fantastic idea. So I mentioned that on my podcast a while ago, but we've talked about it since. And what we're going to do is have a swapless swap in my group. So that's really exciting. So um, yeah, there is a thread up in my Ravelry group now, Cherry Hearts Cozy Corner, and um, it's a swap for, I'm not going to say this right, I don't think, I should have written it down, why didn't I write it down? Javier Land? It's a shop on Etsy, and I'll obviously link to it. 
and I hadn't heard of it before, I'll admit. When Lisa suggested it, she said, oh, I've arranged it all and this is who we're doing it with. Um, I hadn't heard of it before, but she's a yarn dyer and she's um, based in America. And I popped over to have a look at her yarns. Yeah, very, very nice stuff. <laughs> really pretty. So, um, I really wish I knew how to say that. I'll put it down here. There you go, that's what it is. Have your land? Have, have by it? I can't say it, I'm useless. I'm useless with talking. Um, yeah, so anyway, if you would like to join the Swapless Swap and maybe start your own blanket or just get some more minis in for your blanket and to swap, or if you even just want to try some of these gorgeous yarns from this lovely lady, then pop along to the Ravelry group and sign up. Yeah, so if you're based in America, it will cost $30. Canada, it's $35. And for pretty much everywhere else in the world, it's going to work out at $40. So for UK people watching, that works out at about £32, £33, depending on the exchange rate. Um, because that includes, obviously, all your shipping and everything. So what you'll get is 10 minis. 10 all different these are and um, each one will be yeah so it's about 40 yards so they're 10 grams each so all together you'll receive 100 grams so which is the same as you know a whole hank of yarn so um, but you'll have lovely different ones to put in your blanket but also because you've got 10 grams ish you will probably have some left over that you can swap out again and you know get some more yarns from people so I would imagine see my squares are about six so you might not be able to get two squares out of mine but if you're doing what I'm doing and doing a whole square and then doing little segments you could either split them up and do two segments or you could do a bigger one or you could just do one square and then swap your leftover bit with someone who's doing smaller squares because a lot of people that are knitting them are only using four or five grams in their squares. So if you've got a knitted one, you might be able to get two of your whole squares. If you're only making five gram squares, you should be able to get two out of that. So it works out quite well. So effectively, if you're kind of careful and you use, if you use, if you make one out of each and then you swap to get some more in, you could get sort of up to 20 squares out of it. So that's quite good, that's quite exciting. But I really like that, it's a really good idea to start. I, if I'd known about that when I was starting, I would have gone for that because it does take quite a long time to collect up little minis and certainly here in the UK, I find it harder to find people that are actually selling minis. It's coming a little bit more now but um, yeah, it's not quite so readily available as they perhaps seem to be other places. So it's, uh, it's a good chance to get your stocks up from somewhere and really exciting. But do pop along and have a look, look at that shop as well because I ordered something already. This has just got some lovely, lovely self-striping things on there, really. Wow, beautiful. So yeah, take a moment and check that out. And uh, you know, Christmas is coming. That's all I'm saying. People need presents, don't they? Yarny people like us, we need presents. That's yeah. what I was thinking. I've ordered it. I haven't told anyone I've ordered it, but I was thinking it could be a present for me from someone. I should. I might tell them that that's what they're getting me. So yeah, just untangling, tangling myself. It is awkward with you on here, you know. You do make life awkward. Right, so that's the things I'm doing at the moment. So let's talk about some things I've done. Um, first of all, let's go straight into, because of that comment about Christmas, um, let's go straight into my next make. So if you are Christmas phobic and you don't like to know about these things before sort of December the 24th or whatever, then, sorry, I'm not your kind of girl. I like Christmas and I like to get stuff organised so that when sort of December rolls around I can be enjoying it and looking forward to it and not stressing about stuff I've got to do. So I try to get a bit prepped beforehand. But anyway, 
the other week before half term, I hadn't really had much of the Christmas feeling come over me. So, um, yeah, I hadn't really thought about it a great deal. But before half term, I got the feeling. So I had to go with it. So I just whipped myself up a little project bag. Because I know I'm going to be making... Um, I've got Molly's yarn coming, Molly from a homespun house. I signed up to her Christmas yarn. So I know I've got Christmas yarn coming from her. So that might well be my socks that I make in December. And also Little Bobbins does her Christmas Eve cast on. So I will probably do that as well. So I could use Molly's yarn for that or I could use another one. So potentially I've got two, at least two Christmassy projects that are going to need going to need a little project bag to keep them in, aren't they? And how appropriate, look, it's got stockings on it. Sock bag with socks on. But yeah. So it's just simple, just same place, same both sides. But this fabric was so pretty, I thought it doesn't really need a lot of... It doesn't need a lot going on, it can just speak for itself. And then inside I've got little... Holly berries. If you're going to ask me what the yarn is, the yarn, uh, the material is, I've got no idea. I do know I got this one from Sew and Quilt, from Jessie of Sew and Quilt. She has a lovely shop too. Enabler Alert, go check that out as well. But the others, I have no idea. This was just some seven berry, I think. It's not fairly standard, and I just used ribbon ties because I couldn't be bothered to sew any. It's a little dotty ribbons I put on there. But yeah, I tend to not, although I know all my yarns and, you know, I tend to remember what they are, or if not, I've got them all, I've got them all on Ravelry stashed, but with fabric, I kind of pick it up and I don't, I'm not so good, I'm afraid. But yeah, so that's that, so that's quite, yeah, it's good, I'm looking forward to putting a Christmas project in there. And then the other thing that I have actually accomplished is a little something for a friend who I thought could use a little something right now. So these are some lovely little mitts. Now these are made using a drops pattern and it's sort of some numbers nothing very memorable but it's drops pattern you know 7289 or whatever so I will link it so you can find it but this is kind of part of the pattern it's got like a cuff um, section and then it goes to this so I just took this bit it almost looks sort of um, like little peacock feathers or something yeah so I just took that bit and then just put a very simple little edge on afterwards because I thought it didn't need a lot else so they're really cute, nice and warm. Now this yarn I want to talk to you about because I was sent this by Laughing Hens. Um, I got an email from them saying did I fancy giving this a try and I thought oh that's a different one. I haven't tried it so I will. So this is what it is, it's a Debbie Bliss yarn. Again, why do people call things that I can't say the names of? Lahasa? It's cashmere and yak. Oh yes, cashmere and yak. Made in Italy. So, it's 50% 50, 50 cashmere. Oh, wow. And 50% yak. Now, I don't know if you've ever held or touched any yak, yarn made with yak, which I have a couple of times. They had some um, fiber east, I think. But it is just the softest, loveliest stuff it's just like warm butter on toast it's just mm, that's what it is and obviously cashmere you probably know lovely so this is quite a chunky yarn so they're recommending a six millimeter that's us 10 needle so i went with that with these i used a six mil hook and it seemed to work up quite nicely it's really nice actually using something that's um, a bit chunkier. I don't often use chunky yarns, but it is quite nice the way that it works up so quickly and yeah. 
makes a lovely little gift and I love it's interesting because this is plied I don't know if you'll be able to see probably not quite it's kind of the strands interlink as they go up it's almost like a sort of it met like a, it's almost like it's knitted like a little chain now I know there is a chain ply I have no idea if that's what that means but it's almost like a sort of a knitted cord type effect which I haven't liked on yarns before because I sort of don't like the look of it it sort of looks a bit I don't know coarse almost but with this because you've got this lovely soft yarn and this so let's show you the big bit it's got a beautiful halo to it it's actually really really lovely because you get that beautiful softness you get the nice sort of touch of halo I wonder if you can see it on the gloves a little better not quite can you just about look so it's got beautiful warm halo to it but it makes it a little bit more manageable because I actually made something else first and um, I have to rip it back but actually you could rip this back quite easily without problems because I guess it's sort of got a little bit more of sort of structure to the way it's plied so it doesn't the hairs don't stick out so much that they sort of tangle and not with each other so actually I really like it for this I think it's really effective. I keep holding this up in the hope it's going to work better this time. I'm not sure that it is. I'll see if I can get a better photo of it and pop that in the show notes for you. But yeah, it's really lovely. So that's all I had left from, I got one skein, one hank, and it just made this project perfectly and I've got a little bit left over. So it makes a gorgeous sort of one ball project. Sort of the little mitts and I wanted to sort of use it as much of it as possible as well I didn't want to waste any because it's just well it's so luxurious it's the softest stuff it would make an amazing cow an amazing cow you probably would need two for that but yeah I might have to see what other colors there are as well and see because that would just feel divine yeah so I really enjoyed that it's not one I've used before but I really really like it I like that it's got this beautiful halo I certainly love the softness and the drape I even like that it's it's kind of chunky without being too without being too <laughs> chunky without being too fat really I think because you've got the nice halo it kind of gives you that extra bounce without having to have the sort of real heaviness to the yarn so you can use your six mil hook and it just and get the speed of that but then it's sort of the fluffiness sort of fills it all out and just oh it's lovely slightly wanting to keep these now <laughs> but i suppose i ought to still give them as a gift yeah so that was from laughing hens i see on but yes really nice so thank you for letting me try that because that was beautiful very nice and i would definitely work with that again make beautiful presents absolutely beautiful presents i think hmm. yeah um so what else have we got to talk to talk about um let's quickly check i'm so sorry i should have written these down oh yes pips Patterns in progress. Oops. Um, just a quick update here because nothing really very new to say. Um, just that my barley wrap is now out. Hurrah! I released it, um, was it half term or just before half term? Just before half term, I think. And um, so, yeah, you can pop along and buy it. It's available in Ravelry and Love Knitting slash love crochet um but yes so that has sold brilliantly so thank you ever so much to everyone that bought a copy 
so appreciated. You were just, yeah, it was really well received. So thank you, thank you, thank you very much for that. I'm very appreciative. Um, yeah, some lovely comments and um, it seems to have gone quite well. So thank you for that. And the other thing is, I'm a bit late with this one. So it's the half terms, they mess me up entirely every time. Especially because Hubs was off as well. He had the week off too, so we just went completely off piste and did other stuff than we normally would, so the routine was shot. But yes, getting Ziggy, as I now called it, aka the wonky zebra, is now in testing. I've actually started the test, so um, yeah, we'll see how that goes. Fingers crossed that it's okay and nothing too horrendously wrong with it. Um, so obviously it will take a little while for them to work through that and uh, come back to me with their comments. But hopefully we'll get that out later in the month. So that's good. And then the other thing is incoming goodies. So this time the incoming goodies I have is two things to show you. First of all, something that I've been planning for a little while. And I'm going to make myself a crocheted cardi, and I'm going to make it out of lovely, lovely, luxurious indie dye yarn. So I've been thinking about this for a while, and I saw something on Molly's site that I quite liked. And I think, I don't know if she only had one hank of it, or just I wasn't completely sure. But I saw it, and I kept thinking about it. But I didn't actually get it at the time. And then when it was gone, I thought, yeah, I did want it. <laughs> that is the one I want to make my cardigan out of. And I'll tell you why I wasn't sure. It's because of the colour. You'll see in a moment. <clears throat> but, um, yeah, so I waited until it came back in and then I got some. So this is what it is. It's called a Goblin Dance and it's on her gold Stellina base. And the reason I wasn't sure is because it's got purple in it again. It's more purpley purpley. It's very Halloween colour actually. Halloween cardigan. Not sure I'm up to that. But yeah, I thought I wasn't really into purple, but I seem to be having a bit of a purple thing happening lately. Isn't that just divine? Look at this lovely sort of subtle patch. And then this lovely little rust bits in it. I'm hoping, oh, I'm hoping it's going to be amazing. So I've got myself four skeins of that. And I think, I think, I think, I think, because I need one other colour. I think I might use the pale pink that I got from um, Regina that I showed you last time to do the little contrasty stripes that are in the pattern. So the pattern that I'm doing is um, by Cat Golding and it's from that little booklet. Did I show you last week? They've got a little booklet of three cardigans. Is it just called Three from the Top, maybe? And it's part of the crochet project that she does with Joanne Scrace. Never know if I'm saying that right. Um, yeah, so it's one out of there that I've picked. So I'm going to do that. I wonder when I'll do that, actually. Because I've had that sort of big thing on the go, my mind has been filled with, I can make this, I can make this, I can make this. And there's so many things I want to make all at once at the moment. It's kind of making my head explode a little bit. Because I'm not really sort of one for casting on all the things. Because then I can't work on all the things and all the things don't get done and that doesn't make me very happy. So I have to kind of limit myself. But I do want to make all the things. So it's difficult. So I might start this in December maybe. For some reason I'm imagining December as this wonderful chilled out time where I won't have anything to do but to crochet and knit on things. So not realistic. But anyway, that's going to be made sometime soon. And then the other thing I got was actually a gift. This was from the lady that I was telling you about that were um, wanted to know if I had some minis and at the time I didn't have any. Well more recently I contacted and said oh actually if you're still up for it I do have some now. 
So I packaged them up and I didn't really expect anything in return because when we spoke earlier in the year she actually sent me out a lovely package which was just so sweet of her. But this time she sent me something else. So it was from the lovely Brenda who I met through Ravelry and she's got a dash as well. She's got a little dashy. So we were sort of chatting about our pups and such like. And um, yeah, she sent me this. And look at that cute stitch marker, that's so cute. So this one, I've never heard of this before. Knitted Whipped. Find treasures from a sassy girl. I'm imagining, yeah, made here. I think it's got an American flag. I was gonna say, oh, look at the glare, oh my God. Um, yeah, I was imagining it was from America just cause, I don't know really why. But yeah, that is really pretty. It's quite unlike anything I've got. Really sort of oceany colours. Really like it. It's a 80% superwash merino, 20% nylon. And it's called Stargaven. G-A-V-E-N. Star... I don't want to say Gavin. <laughs> Stargaven. I can't be right, it's got to be Stargaven, has not it? It's not a word I'm familiar with. I was expecting it to say stargazing, but... Oh, glare, nightmare. Where are you coming from, there? Hmm. But yeah, that's really pretty. Really pretty. So I'm looking forward to that one. That one I think will be socks, because I haven't got any socks in that kind of colour. So that would be good. Um... Right, well I think that's it for today. I have no idea how long this is because I've had to keep stop starting due to certain people being pestilent. Um, so yes, I best let you go. But thank you for coming and watching. Thank you for returning and um, making it this far if you did. Thank you so much for coming back and thank you if you're new and tried me out. I hope you liked it. And, and if you did like it and you would like to subscribe, that would be great. You can subscribe up on YouTube. And I'll see you next time. Bye.